Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nina Stavsky. I am originally from a small startup called Omnition, uh, but as it happens, we recently got acquired by a much bigger company, Splunk. Um, and I am actually a front-end engineer. And just to get a sense of basically the crowd, let me know how many front-end engineers are here. Okay, a few, awesome. All right, well, we are not budget at this conference, um, but still. <laughs> cool, so why did I decide to give this talk? Well, as front-end engineers, you know, anything happens, your customers see UI first, and UI always gets blamed first. Um, something happens, you gotta, like, you get um, bad feedback from your back-end engineers, from ops, it's like, it must be in the UI. You say, no, no, it must be in the back-end, it must be somewhere else. And the truth is, the, is somewhere there, it's somewhere in between, it could be front-end, could be back-end, and there is no, um, easy way to track um, like difficult performance issues, especially in the front end. It's uh, tough to really um, look for issues within your code using analytics alone. It looks like while well, you're just trying to find a needle in a haystack, sometimes you gotta, gotta go and look at your backend logs. If it's uh, microservices, you gotta go and look into your traces. Um, but then it turns out to be somewhere else. And backend engineers and ops, you guys have really good tools at your disposal, especially with uh, now a lot of open source projects and data collection. So, well, we front end our engineers too. We also want to um, find out what happens. And we also want to build microservices. It's new, but this also, like, this is a new thing that. Um, is especially hard to track. Um, and we have, well, as, as I mentioned, there is a project that helps you um, collect your data and make sense of your uh, distributed data. And um, I will be talking about it a little bit. Um, and Open Telemetry is basically a combination of two uh, projects, Open Tracing and Open Census. And it basically just lets you do distributed tracing, but for backend. Um, and because my company is a big contributor into open telemetry, uh, first thing I asked myself was, okay, can you do something in the front end here? And I found out, yes, there is a library there, and it exists for Node, so it's really not for front end, it's for your back end, it lets you track everything. Um, but can it run in the browser? And what can you do with it if it can? So I'm taking you with me on this quest to um, find out if it can run in the browser and what we can do with it. Um, and this is, I think, gonna be the first time I'm gonna be coding in front of so many people watching me code. So, cut me some slack. Um, and I have an application here that we're gonna be um, instrumenting. So I have a set of uh, actions you can take. Basically, you will be taking a set uh, of actions, and then we're gonna be ending these actions. Uh, I have a Zipkin instance running. And I have some boilerplate code already, so you don't watch me code for half an hour. It's gonna be very uh, few things. So let's get to that. And let me know if you can see this. Maybe I just need to zoom in a little. All right, so I have my application. I have a bunch of uh, buttons that uh, do certain actions. When you click uh, the first button, you start a chain of actions, and then there is an option to end uh, actions, so right here. Um, and I want, when I click my first button, I want to be able to create a span, um, cr and actually create a trace, and start adding spans into that trace. And when I finish, I want to post it to Zipkin. So there are two parts to that. I commented out some code, uh, but we're gonna be using this, so 
and we uh, we're gonna be um, creating a React hook if like front end people know what React is probably. Um, but you can do it. it, it doesn't have to be React. You can do it with uh, other backends. It's just something I'm more familiar with and it's uh, simpler to do. Um, so we're gonna be creating a tracer first and you can see there are a few libraries uh, conveniently existing in OpenTelemetry project already. Um, there is OpenTelemetry core, OpenTelemetry tracing, Zipkin exporter, of course, and because I'm writing in TypeScript, there's also some types. So first thing we're gonna do is create a tracer. Now we have a tracer, uh, we need to configure um, our exporter. So let's do And I will call I will call my service our awesome UI. And we are creating an exporter. So once an exporter is there, we need to make sure the span processor is working and we can actually send spans that we create. So let's add span processor. And you can see uh, OpenTelemetry provides a simple span processor already. And we'll do that with the exporter. Open telemetry. And we'll, oh, not here. And we're gonna initialize um, the global tracer with my tracer. Um, basically, that's all you need to wire up open telemetry into your projects. That's it. Well, we'll need to create a function that uh, let us create spans, but this is as easy as it is. Um, so, yeah, let's continue with creating a span. It's also going to be pretty quick, so. And thanks to already creating uh, existing types uh, for TypeScript, it's easier to do. Um, as I mentioned, if we want to create a uh, trace, so we have a set of spans. Um, this is basically um, maybe our actions, and it's failed to compile, of course, because I haven't finished this. Uh, but basically, this is our actions when I click the button every time I'm gonna create um, this span, a piece of uh, my data that I'm tracking, tracking. And if I wanna connect them together, I need to put them together into a trace. Um, and to do that, I create one span and everything else uh, I will put inside of it. So. Uh, you can see I have an attribute parent right here. So if I pass the parent in, it is a part of this existing trace. If I didn't pass, it will be a new span. So, so. tracer start span. And I'm gonna be passing a span name so that I know what's, uh, what's going on and I'm gonna be passing parent potentially. All right. And if there is no parent, I'm just gonna start a span with a name. Now you wanna pass some metadata with, uh, with your spans as well. Well, something that's happening, maybe user IDs, maybe, uh, well, maybe not user IDs because GDPR, <laughs> but maybe something else. Um, and uh, for that you, just go with the attributes. And we wanna make sure that no inherited attributes get in. So I'm adding this little thing here. Okay. 
All right, one more thing is we wanna make sure we pass an event name so we know what's happened. In this case, it will be a click. Uh, so if we have an event name passed through, let's add an event. And we're actually done. So after we created a span, we, uh, if we want to track performance, we want to make sure the span ends right, uh, like if it's a button click, for example. The span ends, uh, ends right when I click it. Um, but if I want to track performance of maybe a, some larger function, uh, I would separate it into two different functions. I would start a span right here, but I would also add a separate uh, function for end span. In this case, we don't need this, so I'll just end the span right here. And and I'm gonna return it so, so my application, uh, when it's returned, uh, can track uh, current parent uh, span to create a trace. So this should actually, let's see, my app is back up. And as you can see, I have no traces in Zipkin right now. So let's click on a few buttons and see what happened. Yes, it's through. And you can see all of my uh, button clicks. So I clicked three, uh, four, uh, one, three, eight, and seven. And you can see that, um, oh, right, let's, uh, da, da, da. yes, so you can, you can see there is a button one. For some reason, it doesn't show me that it's been a click event, um, but it should be. So. <laughs> live demos. Yeah, so basically, we just found out that um, OpenTelemetry Lib can run in a browser, and it opens actually a lot, of, um, a lot of different possibilities. And by the way, the code that I just wrote in the bottom, there is a GitHub link, and I also have it uh, at the end of the slides, so you can check it out. As you can see, like we could do it right here live at stage, so it's short, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it gives you a lot of power. So, all right, it, it is now traceable front end. You can run it in the browser. You can uh, build it for React. Is it really useful? What can we do with that? And well, there is a bunch of things you could do. Um, one is basically have separate, um, separate functions um, in there in your front end to track performance of your applications of different pieces. Maybe you receive a JSON from a back end and you want to check how long does it take to um, basically to parse on, in different environments when your front end runs in different browsers. Um, if you have multiple front ends, uh, you want to be sure you connect these front ends with uh, specific uh, data in the back, back end. Um, you can, if you see that something is taking longer, but you cannot influence that. So this is the case when there is an issue and I'm not the cause of it as a front-end engineer. Well, um, I can still remediate it by adding maybe notifications uh, to a user that things are taking long. Um, you can use this um, open telemetry in the browser or you can not use it in the browser. So. Alternatively, for example, if you have multiple back end, uh, multiple front ends, front end applications connecting to your back end, it's not necessarily all JavaScript. It's not necessarily all React. It could be native apps. You could still um, take um, advantage of open telemetry. You could still create your spans in front end. You can pass them to the back end, and um, you can connect them with the data that you have. And also, don't get locked into a single vendor. Open source is a wonderful thing. So is this all nice with running in the browser? Not really. If you want to run open telemetry lib in the browser, of course, it's, in my local environment, it's easy. I spin the Docker instance, and I just post there. No authentication, nothing. It works. But you have to take care of, um, basically, cross-site resource sharing, you, can, you need to take care of authentication, you need to make sure it's secure, so there is some work around that. Um, the traces you get, especially if you connect them to the backend info, 
they will give you a view on your system in general. It probably doesn't give you a view on your front end only. So basically, you look at the whole stack from clicking the front end and maybe some actions to, the, to all the requests in the database. And as I mentioned, some front ends, like native, will not support the lib, and you will have to customize them. You will have to do something else. But you get more tools, more context to help solve your issues faster. Uh, and I can see two ways to approach this, or specifically with OpenTelemetry uh, running it in the, uh, running in the browser. So you can create spans, then the way I showed you, you can post directly to the collector, or you can just collect it, you can create your custom expert or you just can collect it in the front end, and you can post it through with your calls to your back end so you don't need to add anything, um, any um, diff additional connections. And then you can put together your back end and front end traces, and make sure your application runs smoothly. So, thank you. This is a link to the code that I showed you, um, and uh, there is a little bit um, more over there. Um, basically, you can, uh, you'll see some more code over there. And this is how to contact me. Thank you. have a little bit of time for questions, if anyone has a question. I'm curious, who here is trying to get observability data out of the browser? Show of hands, who here? How, how's that going? Show of hands, who's like totally satisfied with their current experience getting it? No hands, no hands. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, is there something anyone wishes they had but they don't have right now? You. What do you wish you have but don't have in the browser? So can this be used with GraphQL? Yes, it can be used. So in fact, our, um, our backend is GraphQL. And in front end, we also use Apollo. You, and you totally can use it with GraphQL, yes. Does it need any customization still? Or like, is it like a you need, you need to customize it a little. But I showed you, I created this custom hook for React. Um, and you basically need to add uh, custom function, but you need to, you can create your traces right in your, uh, in the function where you fetch the data from GraphQL. So uh, it totally can be done. So I will actually in the coming weeks, I will. The request basically, like, can we trace them? Uh, trace what? Can you, can The you request. The request? Yeah. Um, do you mean when you have a WebSocket connection and there is a It's a single endpoint most of the times. It's a single endpoint post operation, and we would like to trace the request basically. How yeah. many? Basically, like a, a GraphQL is like okay, it's a schema driven yeah. JavaScript based kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, like we would like to trace the request so that we can understand the complete uh, trace of it. Yes, you you can trace the request, but actually you can also do it. You don't have to. Uh, track it in the front end as well. You can kind of infer it as well if you track your GraphQL backend. Uh, but front end gives you a little bit more data on kind okay. of where the request starts. Oh, okay. We have like other vendors as well, like, like a Dynatrace, Datalog, every one is there. So how different it is from them, basically? Can you repeat that? I don't hear you very so well. We have other vendors like a Dynatrace, Datalog, and all. But when it comes to open telemetry, is it going to be partnered with them, or like a, is it going to be a separate individual? Well, well, open telemetry is an open source project, so you can get it from GitHub anytime. You can uh, run it yourself, so and you can use it with other tracing products. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Any more questions? There's a question. All right. So the, the pattern of having the tracing go through the front end, uh, we considered this and basically went against it because having the front end decide on multiple microservices to talk to raises our surface area exposed to, to the public. And so we, we generally would have the front end talk to one consistent app that acts as a proxy onto all the other subsystems. Yes. Yeah. So given that you went this direction, would you, would you prefer this or would you prefer the other like, like proxy? Um, and I guess contrasting the two. So 
Yeah, actually, if you if you have multiple front ends, proxy probably makes more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it becomes your bottleneck, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but another another way I mentioned um, in front end, you, you don't you don't have to create traces and post them right away. Well, of course, it gives you more real time data, but you can create them, collect them in front end, so you have your custom exporter, and then you post through your uh, proxy. So you could do that as well. Oh, so you declare to the proxy who you want to call yeah. as, with that whole trace with each of the spans, and the proxy just executes. Yeah, yeah, you oh, could do that. That's smart. I like it. Thanks. All right. Other questions? I just wanted to make uh, one point. Actually, there was a question about open telemetry and whether various like vendors and backends were supporting that project. But uh, people who are from Dynatrace or New Relic or Splunk or Lightstep or any of these vendors uh, who are working on open telemetry in here, can you raise your hands? Yeah. So that's one way of answering that question. There's a lot of support. Yes. Great. Yes, and it's an open source project, so anybody's contribution matters. So if you're thinking of it or anything, even write a blog post, create a question, create an issue. Yeah. Anything helps to push the project forward. Yeah. Not quite production ready, though. Coming soon. Oh, well, kind of. It will be soon. <laughs> Getting there. Soon. Yeah. OK. Well, I think we're good on questions. Right. Big Thank round you. of applause.